Oh, it looks good. My favorite dinner rolls. Salad. Deviled eggs. What's the main course? Roast beef. Oh man, love roast beef. Don't you? Well, this looks good. So what we having today, we're having roast beef, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, mac and cheese. I missed something, cream corn, rolls. Anything else that you can remember? Salad. Salad. Oh, okay. Deviled eggs. Happy birthday, Day. Anybody want salt and pepper? <laughs> Day, have a seat. Day, have a seat. It is your birthday. And Ethan's. So it's Ethan and Ed. Ethan is 13 and Daddy's 84. 13 and 84, only 71 difference. <laughs> we'll have a race so you can run faster. Y'all ready? Ready? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethan and Ames. Happy birthday to you. And many more. And it got my looks. Would you blow your side out? Make a wish and blow your side. Hi, right, Dave. Your Make side. your wish and blow yours out. That's your side. Oh, that's my side. Mm -hmm. They couldn't put said 84 candles. Make it a good one. 84 candles. <laughs> Woo, he got it. Took a lot of wind. <laughs> okay, now we'll go cut it. Y'all ready to eat some cake? Oh, yeah. What flavor is it? Ethan? My flavor. Strawberry. Ethan just turned, how are you, 10 or 11? 11. 11? 13 for Ethan. 15 for Garrett. Nick's uh, 56. And them twins are 9. Garrett's 11. And we're not going to talk about other people. <laughs> we're not talking about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and open the open your gift. <clears throat> this is from Brant. You took the money. What's in there? Is there anything? Look, look, look see what's in it. Video, you know. <laughs> do you okay. like those gift certificates? I love you, it. you don't know how to pretend. <laughs> no, I don't. What do you want me to do? Act like you hadn't opened it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Those are nice gift certificates. It's beautiful. <laughs> And there's Fluffy. What's the name of the dog? This is Tucker. Oh, yeah, Tucker. Tucker. This one's from us. All right, there's the next one. It's from Julie. The Pacinis. This is from the Pacinis. No gift certificates in this one. <laughs> this is Julie Pacini. My sister. And there's Nick Pacini. And let's see where he went skiing. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I want to go there. That's where you want to take your kids. I'd love to. <laughs> Let's see it. Hold it up, Dave. What is this? Got a car. Boy, they got a car for your birthday? Man, that's a nice one. Is that a gift certificate? Another one? Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Oh, what is it? Golden, Where's it to? Cracker Barrel, didn't it? Cracker oh, barrel. Cracker Barrel. I'll let you look, okay? Dory, Ooh. you hit the jackpot. I get to, I get to go eat. This one I love. So much. You like those. Cars. And this is what, a what's new in the box? Area they oh, developed the to ski, and then when you're Amazon? looking off, right there, this is west. Oh, yeah. This is Keystone Mountain. What is that? Oh my goodness! Just past there, Got some candy. You said that it was oh, around you. Yum yum. <laughs> There's one. I think I just gave you Ruby Tuesday. No, oh, no, no it was one last year. And there's Ethan. And who is that? That's Garrett? No, that's not Garrett. That's when we... Garrett. Garrett's gotten tall. Yeah, I don't know. I hope they don't run out of... Put that back. 
it's from my little box. Yeah, I like the guns. And then this is from Pat. All from Pat. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. We really appreciate it. Mm, that's that's a cute card. From, what's that? Somebody, somebody else loves cats. Somebody else loves cats. Love cats. She does too. She has. How many you have now? I have two cats. One time you had about 15, didn't you? No, never had 15. Well, how many do we have at Betty's, I mean, down at Betty's Creek or Germany? I don't know, Brian. I warned Months. the kids not to. Uh, go ahead with the story of what happened in Athens. I visited Brant down in uh, when he first moved down there, <laughs> and he didn't have any furniture in the uh, living room. Now this is not. And I sat down on the floor and leaned up against the wall. Was flooded. The wall flooded, and the wall was hot. Interesting. And it was short in the wall. It was electric. It was short. And we believed it'd burn it down if I hadn't gonna come down. And I leaned up against the wall. It was hot. And I was asleep in the back. Just asleep in the back, and I took it apart, and it just lit up. The wall was yeah, it burned, burn it down. So we believe that we believe that's a miracle because what were the chances of him coming down there and him driving all the way down after work? Birthday okay, go down after work, and then he got there, and that thing get ready to go on fire, and I was sleeping in the back. That just coincidence, or was that a miracle? No, another time. Yeah, I'll go outside. Another time, I came in. I came in the house up on Germany Mountain after work about five o'clock. Salmon fish. I came in, and man, I said something's wrong in my heart. I just said something bad wrong. I just I said something. I said something. I said something wrong with Brad. That's my, my heart. I did something wrong with Brad. I never did it before, never did it since. I went up in the balcony and got on my knees. I said, God, watch over Brad and I think Mark. Yeah, those are salmon. I said, and I, my prayer, I said, watch over Mark. His mother loves him. That's the ocean. That's not a leaf. His mother loves him. Watch over Mark. His mother loves him. That's my prayer. Protect him. Next morning, I got up and I heard Brent on the phone. And they were coming back over the mountain there, and they rolled the car. About the same time I was praying. And uh, Brent, he said he held on the seat, but Mark had a big gash in his head. Uh, and he's out on the road, and somebody said, this, this one's dead. He said, I guess he's knocked out. And, uh, but he wasn't, just had a bad gash in his head. But the strange thing about it, I never prayed there before, and never since, just one time. If that were not a miracle, I don't know what it is. So let me add something to that story. So as we were going off the mountain, we flipped end over end in a Mustang, and there was a small mound of dirt that flipped the car back onto the highway. And we were going off a cliff, and that mound of dirt flipped the car back onto the road, That's saved us from going off the cliff. So I, that was unbelievable. I didn't pray for a mound of dirt. But, but anyway, the mound of dirt kept us from going off the cliff. I forgot to pray for that. How old were you, Brant? I was about 17. How old was the driver? About 17. Away Yeah. And I kept warning, I said, Mark, slow down. And he had slick tires on that Mustang. <laughs> oh, I got it. I've driven this many times. And we went around a little bitty in a straight, just a tiny little bitty curve. And it just, and it went sideways. And I saw it sliding towards a cliff and I thought it was all over. So I just grabbed each side of the seat, held on, and I prayed. I said, this is it. And then that's when we hit that mound of dirt, and it flipped back on the highway, end over end, side. The car was so bad, it completely, you couldn't recognize the car. You couldn't recognize it. But I wrote, I was going to write a book, True Stories. And a lot of them I've forgotten. But... Um, Write them all in one book, Daddy. Just, uh, um, just, just a flip book, book, you know? Just write them all in the same book. You can do it order on the... One, two, three, you're on. You're live. I was on a roof, uh, roof up one story, and uh, I was checking a it's commercial so air compressor, Brad. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the, the uh, uh, connector. Talking about on the compressor? In the end of the compressor. And I had my voltmeter down on it, and they blew out. 
And all that oil and gas hit me right in the face. How old were you? I was like about 28. And um, it hit me right in the face, and I backed up all the way to the edge of the roof. And my heels were right, I could look down and see the car down below. And it felt like a hand stopped me. It, felt, it just felt like a, a hand stopped me. Or I'd been head first down on, on the cars. How 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 many stories? In one story. Mm -hmm. So I could see the cars down below. Mm -hmm. And I saw what God did it. Another time, I don't sound like I'm bragging, but it's the most unusual experience I've ever had. Is uh, God's in the miracle business. And I like to record, I like to do the stories of God's in the miracle business. But I was coming home from, 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 from had a body shop there uh, in Pineville. Was this Kentucky what year? Kentucky, 1971, um, um, 72. 72, and I'm fixing cars in the garage, you know, making a living. It's like I'm still doing now some. But I uh, was headed past uh, the, the uh, Harlan Road to the, to the left, go to Harlan, and a boy said, turn left. In my, in my mind, I said, I won't go home, it's, it's cold. I mean, it was icy cold. Well, ice on, on the river. And um, I said, the voice said, turn left. And I said, well, I don't want to go left because I want to get home. It's cold. I want to get in. I, I, and I argued with the Holy Spirit. I argued with him. He said, turn left. And he just over and over, turn left. And I said, well, the junkyard closed at 5. I can't buy parts there. There's no reason to go there. And that's what the hell I answered. We said, do it anyway. So I turned on Harlan Road about five miles out where I used to buy parts. And I pulled up and a whole bunch of men were saying police officers standing in front of the business, business on the left. And I said, what's wrong? <clears throat> and they said, well, there's a guy down there at the river, a junk car, somebody left him on the river, just picked junkers. And he's tripping at the parts, taking parts off of it. And and I said, well, is, is he still in the river? Oh, yeah, he's still, he's dead. That's what they said, he's dead. I said, well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not dead. So I ran down the river about a, about 200 yards and I asked the guy, stand, bring a hose with you. I said, bring, a, bring that water hose with you, bring it with you. I told him, come with, follow me. So I went down and it's frozen over, so I kind of laid down on my belly on the ice and go slide out. And um, I held on the end of the rope, the hose, and, and I got about, I don't know, about halfway out, and the, and the uh, ice went, went through. So I swam on out to him, and he was hanging on him. He'd been there, he said, over a half hour. They said, over a half hour, I had to be dead. So I, I got out there, and I grabbed a hold of him. I had a hold of the hose and him. I tried to pull him off, but he wouldn't come off the, off the tree. And he just like he's locked on it. I kicked him in the ribs. <laughs> Didn't want to, but I, I kicked him in the ribs, and finally he floated away. <laughs> kind of put it to me. The guy was shooting at him. The, 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 the owner of the junkyard was started shooting at him, and he ran from him to go across the river. Trying to get across the river. Trying to get across, and he fell through about halfway across, and fell through. Why was he shooting at him? He was taking parts off the old cars. He was, still in, he was taking copper out of the old cars yeah, on the river. I was copper tool. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's it's probably metal or but something. They've been there for probably 30 years. I mean, it wasn't like new stuff. It's old stuff. And um, so I pulled, I kicked him in the ribs and he kind of floated over to me like it was just like a dead weight. And, and the guy, I said, pull me. And he pulled with the, with the hose. And I had old ham and he pulled us to the bank. And I had a... Uh, Stretcher there, a stretcher there, and put him right in there and took him to the hospital. And I got I got out of there and I said, it was cold and, and um, went on home and I thought, man, that's some experience. And and but yet, there's a whole bunch of people standing on the bank when I got down. Nobody there, would do anything. Just watching. So you're the only one that went in yeah, to watching. save his life. They were just watching. And, um, did I see him out there? But I was a good swimmer, and I wasn't afraid to swim. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I, I water skied a lot. And I just wasn't afraid to swim. The ice was, was just different. laying there, probably. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't afraid of swimming. I wasn't afraid of ice. But, you know, pretty, but, Tell what happened the next week when you went to see him. But anyway, I, I went to the hospital and, and um, talked to him, and 
you know, I talked to everybody about your salvation first, and you know, you're a Christian, and, and I don't remember all I said, and but he thanked me for saving his life. He thanked me. I went to his family. I went and saw his family after that, and he had, I mean, an old shack up in the mountains. I mean, very, very poor. Dirt floor, right? Dirt floor. I mean, he was just very poor. And he bought his children, his wife, and said, we want to thank you for saving our dad. And um, I, you know, I was thankful I was there. And I wasn't a hero. I mean, I just didn't. I just did. But they did give you a medal. Yes, they did. They sent me a, uh, the, the Highway Patrol sent me a certificate of honor. And, uh, did you know that, Julie? Mm -hmm. So he got a medal for saving that guy's life. Another time. Um, We're going to do another one? Yeah. Let me well, I would, Brent, uh, you know, I was writing a lot of service for Brent back then. and was going back, uh, <clears throat> I forget what year that was, about... Uh, we're still. Uh, was it in Gainesville or Athens? Yeah, it was in Gainesville, yeah. Went down uh, toward Buford down there. Buford. And and um, we ran a service call down there. They had me down there. He sent me down on a service call, and I went down there, headed down there, and I saw a whole bunch of cars, and I saw, looked over, and, and um, this one car was up on top. She had, was speeding and got out of school. And she hit the median, flew up the sky, and flew up on top of another car. And sitting on top of that car, and I looked in that car first, and that one was dead. And I got up on top of the, the other car, got up there, and uh, looked in, and there was this boy, and they were dead too. Damn. He halfway out the door, killed him. And a young girl in the car crying. And uh, so the, the engine was burning, and. Um, why Brant did it, he put, before I, before I left, I don't know why he did it, he put a whole case of water in my truck. He put a case of water in my Waters. truck. And I yelled at this guy, went and said, the engine's on fire. I said, we'll have to get the fire out because she's going to burn up too. So we <laughs> we started <laughs> Coke bottles, bell bottles. I mean, every, every, then everybody joined in, helped me. And we got the fire out. And then the... Uh, uh, helicopter came and, and took her away and she lived and um, I was thankful that, um, that the, the timing was right but I, what I puzzled me is why he put the water I never asked for it a case of water and the water was what we used to put the fire out with because it had gone up and, um, but I remember that uh, I was just thankful to be there and not a hero I just I did but what amazes me how people stand around and watch, how they don't don't act, and that that's what puzzled me. In both cases, they stood around and watched, and I don't know if it's fear or don't care, but um, that's what I experienced there. And I right, go ahead. I was coming down to past Rayburn Rayburn High School there, and and I looked over and this. Uh, car was banged in on the driver's door. The guy went across the median and hit the car in the, in the driver's door. And I, I got in the car, this woman was crying. I got in it and back seat and held her hand and prayed with her. And she just cried like a baby. And, and he was still, he wasn't dead yet, but he was just rolling around back and forth. It crushed him. The door crushed him. And and finally the medics got there and uh, I got out and they pulled him over top of the seat, couldn't get him through the door. They pulled him out over the seat and he didn't live. But she she did. And um, but I remember that like it was yesterday. And I don't know, I just hope show up show up on these things and another time I was coming uh, um, down the Patrol Graven County High high there and looked over and this this uh, camper rolled over in a ditch and burning and it, and the, her husband standing up on the bank and man I, just, I felt sorry for that guy I mean, it was awful he was crying like a baby and uh, he couldn't get her out oh man and I, I put my arm around him and I said I prayed God give him strength had prayer with him and I hope that helped him and because it was the worst time in his life and just what was an RV uh, what kind of thing? like an RV it was an RV okay mm -hmm. you couldn't get in it no, I was always burning like crazy, and um, it was already in, in blaze, and the police wasn't even there yet. And um, 
But you know, I couldn't couldn't help her. It was just too late. And my own brother, Denver. Denver went in a burning house. Denver was might have made a lot of mistakes, but Denver, I love my brother. I appreciate his funeral. Just four months ago, my brother's funeral. And I'm sure I'll tell that story, Brian. Go ahead. Anyway, we were close, and you know, my only brother. And every time I needed help, Denver was there. When I had prostate cancer when I was 65, and Denver sent $5,000 the mass for it. They sent another, sent another $3,500, didn't ask for it. And I told him, stop sending them back to work. I was working with Grant then, and stop sending them back to work. And um, I told him, stop sending it. And um, we did. But in Denver, uh, Brothers Love, I wrote a story. My great friends got a copy. Of, put, they put in a newspaper, Brothers Love. And uh, Denver, one time, uh, the police guy after his, got after him and Ray, not Ray, but a friend of his, for climbing up the towers there at the uh, football stadium. And they ran from the police, and I ran too. I couldn't swim a lick. Denver went across the river first, and I went behind him. And our friend was still standing on the bank. And we are going across the river to get away from the police. Them boys been, didn't do anything wrong. He was climbing up to the towers. And they saw that we were going to go across the river, and they just turned around and left. They knew that we'd go out that river and die. They the police did that? They left then. They, they, they were forcing us to go across the river, and they knew what they were doing. They were smart enough to turn around and go leave. So we'd come back, we could come back out. But anyway, I went in and, and, and it was just shallow. I mean, I was just up to about right here and all at once he went nowhere. And he went down and he blow the water and I grabbed him and I said, like this around his neck. I had a death grip on him. <laughs> so you went on top of his shoulders? No, I was on his shoulder, on his shoulder. I had a neck, I had a neck hold it, but I wouldn't let loose. <laughs> his, his sputter and spitting and everything. He'd come to the top every once in a while, spit a little bit and go back under. But anyway, <laughs> this guy standing on the bank reached out and grabbed my hand and, and pulled me in. He pulled me in, I brought Denver in with me. And he's never forgiven me that. <laughs> Denver's a daredevil. And, uh, when I was, when I got a divorce, I was 10 years old, we ran the streets, and, um, You're talking about in the 40s? And I'm going back to 1950, 1950, and, uh, we, we went around the streets, we played in the, in the Ohio River, that's where we played, and, and, um, one day, I was walking across, it had a boardwalk across, the, across, the, I got a picture of the bridge, the, the trussle, but he'd go, he'd go up on top of that trussle, and run across the top of it. He's about that wide. He'd run across the top and get squad pigeons and put it. He, he kept them in his, in his, at home. He put them in a cage. And uh, one day, um, one day he dropped a, a squad. He dropped a squad in the river. He climbed climbed down and swam out to get it out of the river. It's nuts, but he did it. I don't know if he ever got it or not, but he couldn't get back in because it was too swift. And I wasn't, I was, I was still heavy then, I was just fat. And I, I, I ran as fast as I possibly could, ran a, a block down to, to the next bridge. Went out on the, waited out on the, you know, has some kind of supports around the bridge. I got up on that and reached out and grabbed his hand and pulled him back in. Well, he was getting ready to go to the falls or something? He was, he was right at the falls. He had gone over the falls. And I considered that a miracle. So you so you were able to save his life by right. grabbing his hand, right. pulled him back. Pulled him back in. I couldn't swim a lick. But anyway, we, man, we just lived. That's the life we lived. And one day, we were crossing the... Do you know all these stories, Julie? I think I've heard most of these. I was, I was uh, <clears throat> in, a, in kind of a sleep, uh, slumber. I had a boardwalk about that wide going across the middle of the bridge. And I was walking across, and there's a freight train moving real slow right here, so I didn't think anything about it. 
So I was walking out away from it, just kind of going that way. And uh, Deborah's up on top of the trussel, up on top of it. And um, <clears throat> I couldn't really hear him because the freight train was so loud. He yelled at me to, to get out of the way because the diesel train was coming the other way. It was coming in, coming in faster. And what he told me later, I just didn't know, I didn't know it. But if I'd stayed in the middle, the diesel would have sucked me underneath it. He jumped off the, jumped off, off the top of the trussel down onto a moving freight train. It wasn't going fast, but it's moving. That, that, that take nerve. Jumped down on that trussel, jumped down off the freight train and flattened me on the ground. It held me on the ground. That's a brother's love. So he saved your life there. Yeah. Jumped off the trussel onto a moving train. Yeah. And then pinned you to the ground where you could get right. sucked under. Right. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's powerful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Then, I don't know if I can tell this or not. Actually, on breath number seven, gazillion, five hundred and six, three million, four hundred seventy two thousand three hundred fifty two. It's pure miracle. It's pure miracle. <laughs> that was breath number. <laughs> what, was there, what was there any mistakes though? Mistakes? There are no mistakes. <laughs> it's a miracle that Julie said yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a lucky guy. It just proves you have to catch people at the right moment. You know, you know she married you for your money, don't you? She did? Not for your good looks. It's because your good looks. And now she has it all. <laughs> Got the good looks and the money? It's another gift card. It's an Aldi. Wow. Well, you hit the jackpot today. I need half this money since I'm the manager. It's a grocery store gift card. Yeah, we needed that. You're how? But we got a God of miracles, and you know, I just you can't always remember. It's not that often that these things happen. Um, Around this uh, flowers here, we can actually see Michelle. But see Michelle but and then I go to the other side of the flowers, I've got Julie. And then, let oh, me read it. Michelle yeah. Francis Ethan, Dad, 2024, 84 years young. Is that a mega hat? Well, no. no.